Anna Hyatt Huntington, Sculptor of Animals by James Cross Giblin. A jaguar crawls down from his perch. Three bear cubs play together. An alligator opens its mighty jaws. These animals do not live in a zoo or circus. They live in one of the many museums where Anna Hyatt Huntington's animal sculptures are on display. Anna's strong interest in animals ran in the family. Born in 1876 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, she was the daughter of Alpheus Hyatt, a well-known scientist who studied animal fossils. Anna's mother was a talented artist who drew the pictures for her husband's books. She encouraged Anna to watch animals closely. Anna had plenty of chances to watch them when she visited the family's farm in Maryland in the summertime. Once, when Anna's father was searching for her at dinner time, he found her lying in a field, nose to nose with a horse. She was watching the animal's jaw muscles as it chewed a mouthful of grass. Both Anna and her older sister, Harriet, were interested in sculpture. Harriet, the more outgoing of the two, did portraits and figure studies of people. Anna, a shy girl whose nickname was the clam, made figures of animals. The sisters worked together to create several group sculptures. The figures came out so well that Anna decided to try to be a sculptor. I felt as I had been born with clay in my hands, she said. After studying with a sculptor in Boston, Anna went to New York. There she made clay models of the animals at the Bronx Zoo. She did many studies of a fierce jaguar from Paraguay. The zookeepers had named him Senor Lopez. As the graceful slinky jaguar came down to feed, Anna captured its movements in clay. She did not copy her animal models exactly, but tried to portray their basic spirit. She said, animals have many moods and to represent them is my joy. In 1909, after traveling in France and Italy, Anna rented a large studio in Paris. In Paris, she created a life-size statue of Joan of Arc on horseback. This statue proved she could sculpt people as well as animals. Anna was attracted to Joan because of the French woman's courage and strong religious beliefs. The 15th century farm girl was inspired by Catholic saints and led her country's army to victory against the English. I thought of Joan before her first battle, speaking to her saints and holding up her sword, Anna said in an interview. It was only her mental attitude, her religious fervor, that could have enabled her to march three or four days with almost no sleep to withstand cold and rain. That is how I tried to model her. With the help of one other woman, Anna made a framework for her statue of Joan. They masked clay over it. Then they brought in a live horse to serve as the model for Joan's mount. After four months of steady work, the clay statue was finished. Anna had it cast in plaster and entered it in the 1910 Paris Salon. The sculpture won an honorable mention. Some said the judges didn't give the statue a higher prize because they didn't believe a woman could have created such a large work without a man's help. The statue came to the attention of an American group that wanted to honor Joan on her 500th birthday. Cast in bronze, it was erected in 1915 alongside Riverside in New York City, facing the Hudson River. Art critics praised the statue highly. Full-scale replicas were mounted in Gloucester, Massachusetts, San Francisco, California, Quebec, Canada, and Blois, France. Anna's work had long been admired. Now her statue of Joan of Arc made her very famous. In 1923, Anna married Archer Milton Huntington. 
He was a wealthy man who spent his fortune helping to set up museums in different parts of the United States. While on a yachting trip in the late 1920s, Archer and Anna docked at Georgetown, South Carolina. Charmed by the natural beauty of the area, they brought, bought 600 acres of the old Brook Green Plantation and renamed it Brook Green Gardens. On part of the land, the Huntingtons built an outdoor museum for native plants and trees. The collection included camellias, magnolias, and ancient oaks. A zoo would house such animals of the region as otters, alligators, and white-tailed deer. In the center of Brook Green was the sculpture garden. In the beginning, Archer thought the garden would contain only his wife's work. However, Anna, true to her generous spirit, insisted that pieces of other sculptures be included also. As time went on, the garden became the home of the world's largest outdoor collection of American realistic sculpture. Among the sculptures at Brook Green are works by Frederick Remington, famous for his cowboys, Daniel Chester French, who sculpted the figure of Abraham Lincoln that sits in the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., and Gazan Borglum, who carved the heads of the presidents on Mount Rushmore. But for many visitors, the favorite sculptures are Anna Hyatt Huntington's own animal figures. In 1939, the Huntingtons moved to Connecticut. Anna raised Scottish deer hounds, kept a bird sanctuary, and continued sculpting. Archer died in 1955, but Anna kept on working. A magazine article described her at 85 years old. They said in the article, a woman of vig vigorous wit and charm who can still scamper up a 10-foot ladder to work on her massive sculptures, sculptures it said. When she was 90 years old, Anna finished her last large-scale work. This was a monument to a Revolutionary War hero, hero, General Israel Putnam. She continued to sculpt small figures until 1972, the year before she died. She was 97. Today, at Brook Green Gardens and in more than 200 museums throughout the world, Anna's horses still rear up. Her bear cubs play. Senor Lopez the jaguar slinks down the trunk of a jungle tree.